Rub up your engines! Well, Subaru's fighting the right to repair here on the East Coast, you know, in Boston, Massachusetts, they pass the right to repair bill, and they're trying a sneaky one. What they're doing is, Subaru says they're going to deactivate the wireless systems on all Subarus in the state of Massachusetts, so they can comply to the new law. The law says that Massachusetts customers should have access to this information system, so instead, they're just shutting the information system down. Kind of sneaky, Subaru, pretty sleazy deal you're going there. Now, the law is meant so that people themselves, their independent mechanics, can get the information to fix cars. So basically what Subaru is doing is they're saying, well, legally, we'll just shut it off for all the cars in Massachusetts. Then you can't say one side has an advantage over the other, the dealers versus independents. Subaru has a thing called Starlink. It's a telematic service reports if your vehicle is stolen, gives all kinds of information, but it also gives information on repairing the car. Subaru decided not to give the Starlink anymore in Massachusetts as a way to subvert the law and make them not violating the Right to Repair Act. A little technicality here. What do you expect? There's law involved, right? And here is Subaru's response. It's been determined that we are no longer able to offer Starlink safety and security subscriptions to Massachusetts residents beginning with model year 2022. So because of a technicality in the law, they're trying to skirt giving the information for the right to repair by shutting the system off. But it's also shutting down safety system too, to me. Somebody should counter sue them for that and say, that's the safety of people involved. And you're cutting that off for the state of Massachusetts. We're going to sue Subaru. I hope they go and sue Subaru for that one. Maybe Subaru doesn't have such great lawyers. They didn't see that there's a big hole right there, right? Come on now. I didn't go to law school, but anybody can look at the ramifications of that one. And of course, the Auto Alliance and the Subaru dealers in New England had no comments upon this. <laughs> they got caught with a finger in a pie, right? Sleazy Subaru, don't try these sleazy deals to try to counteract good laws so people can fix their own cars by a technicality. We know you lawyers can get away with things in court, but in the real world, you know what Scotty says? Scotty says, tell Subaru to go and don't buy their cars in New England. That'll teach them a lesson. They sell a lot of cars in New England because they're all wheel drive. If they're going to pull this kind of crap, now all you people know about it, don't buy their cars. Or if you have one, complain to them. Say, this is a raw deal. This stinks. Honda Joe 65 says, I live in Pennsylvania. The Walmart in my town says gasoline for 10 cents less. Is there any problem? Should I pay more for a name brand? Walmart doesn't make gasoline. They buy it from a company. But all of them have to have a certain amount of additives so they burn correctly. So it's not something you got to worry about. They're buying them from a companies that make gasoline. And you got to understand one thing that most people don't know. In most areas, there's only one refinery and everybody buys gas from the same refinery. Exxon, Shell, whatever. They use the same refinery and then they have additives put in. So the basic gasoline you're buying just about anywhere comes from the same place and then they supposedly put different additives in for the different companies. Don't worry about it, you know. <laughs> the main thing you want in gasoline is fresh. So if they're selling it cheaper, they're going to sell a lot of it so they're going to have fresh gas. You don't want to go to some gas station out in the middle of nowhere in the boonies that made the gas might have been sitting there for six months in the tank, water might infiltrate it. You want fresh gasoline, just like you want fresh eggs, you want fresh gasoline. I'm sure Walmart sells a lot. You'll have no problem juicing their gasoline. They don't make it, they're just buying it from another company. And the water says, I have bad shift from first to second gear after I drive my car 10 minutes. It's a Toyota Corolla 2000. I had the transmission flushed out two years ago. When I drive, it's fine. After 10 minutes, it clunks from first to second gear. All the other ones work fine. You change the fluid. I don't advise flushes, but I mean, that was two years ago. If you got a problem with a flush, it's going to happen immediately, and it didn't. So it could be wearing from first to second gear, in which case you'd have to rebuild the transmission, which costs a fortune. But, and this is a gigantic but, all this stuff's run by computers. Get your VIN number, call up a Toyota dealer, say, are there any upgrades on the transmission software? And they very easily could have an upgrade, and you go to Toyota, and they just reprogram the computer to make it shift better from first to second to compensate for wear. As transmissions wear, the computers have to change how it shifts, the shift points, pressure stuff, and it's all done by computers. I've seen some people take them in, they get them reprogrammed, blah, it fixes it. Now, but if not, personally, I'd live with it because to rebuild that transmission is going to cost you anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. And if you guess with the used transmission, that's just a guess, it's a big gambling, the car runs fine otherwise. I had an Opal, first car I ever had, it was horrible from first to second, it used to clunk all the time. I drove it that way for six, seven years, sold it to another guy, he drove it, then he sold it to another guy. It was still clunking, but it was still going.
W says, I have a clicking noise from the steering wheel in the dash. Got no five Lexus, ES330, 100,000 miles. I start hearing a clicking noise from behind the steering wheel. It goes away. Recently, the dash was disassembled when the leaking AC evaporator was replaced. Can you help me? All right, take it back to the guy who did the work. Taking that dash apart to get to the evaporator's gigantic job. He screwed up something. You hear a clicking noise. It could be the actuators for the AC system. It could even be a lot of times to do that. You got to drop the steering column. There's bolts that hold it in. When they dropped it and put it on, they might have damaged the universal joint on the steering. When you turn it, it'll click because they damaged it. It didn't occur before you had the work done. Take it back and say to the guy, this thing's clicking. It's not clicking before. Before I brought it in, you did something wrong. That's the problem with modern cars. And the Lexuses, they're well made, but they got so much complexity to work in the dash, you got to take all this crap apart. You can easily screw something up. There's hardly any working room. When I do that kind of work, I hate it. One, you cut your fingers, and two, everything is plastic, and sometimes the plastic pieces break. Well, it might be part of an actuator assembly that costs, you know, $500. And so a lot of times guys will glue them back on or they'll bend it a little, try to make it work. Obviously, they mess something up. Take it back and say, hey, you got mess something up it's making this noise it didn't make fix it I'd start there because you can get a rat's nest of stuff when you start messing around inside those dashes Lexus has never make noise by themselves in the dash and it happened after they did that work take it back tell them hey did something wrong fix it Thunder Cougar 28 says my car stalls or shuts off when I press the accelerator from a stop I got a 2008 Honda it has 92,000 miles I changed the spark plugs coils and the mass airflow sensor and a PCV but a month before the issue I replaced the fuel pump the pump connector plastic was slightly melted but I was able to unplug it and plug in a new pump no partly melted no you want to get a new assembly where it snaps in for the wiring, the connector and everything, or what I often do is, how often you change fuel pump, right? I would just cut the wires on both sides of that connector and I would solder them all together. The only reason it comes apart is so you can take it off and put it back on easily. What do you care? If you cut those wires, then you solder them together and have that heat shrink tubing that you heat up, then it shrinks a water can and tube, then it'll never have a problem. That could be your whole thing. It could be it's not getting enough power. You got melted stuff that's partly melted. It's getting too hot. That will ruin the wires cut them off, solder them together. I mean, you can get a kit, but with Hondas, a lot of times you got to buy the whole wiring harness to get that one piece. So you can just cut the wires. They're color coordinated, right? And then just solder them together, twist them together. I got a video on how to solder wires. You make them bare metal, and then you twist them around each other. Then you heat them up, and then put solder, and it melts. And then you have the heat shrink stuff, and you heat it up, and it seals it. It doesn't rust anymore. And then you don't have to worry about it at all. I've done that on many cars, rather than buy an entire wiring harness. And Chris, the 52 says, my Sienna's running lean. I got an old five Sienna with 197,000 miles. It's running lean. I cleaned the mass sensor, but it didn't change. When I looked at the data, it shows bank one and two are long-term fuel trim of over 20%. What should I do? Replace it. If it's adding 20% fuel and it runs okay, the sensor's got to be bad. They do wear out over time. Now, if you have a massive air leak, it's going to run lean and it's going to have to add fuel, but you'll hear a sucking sound and stuff. Clean it doesn't work it when they wear out. Now, the only other thing would be clogged fuel injectors because both banks are running lean. If the fuel injectors are worn and clogged up, run lean because they won't spray enough fuel. The only other thing is try something simple. Change the fuel filter. If the filter's clogged, you won't get enough fuel volume and it'll run lean. Also, if the fuel pump is weak. Now, the pumps on those things generally last forever, but first change the fuel filter. That might fix the whole thing. If it doesn't, change the mass airflow sensor. That doesn't fix it. Pressure test the fuel pump a weak pump doesn't pump enough fuel make it run lean and it'll have to keep adding fuel start with the simple stuff then pray it's not something complex like you need all six fuel injectors which costs a whole bunch of money well GM is proving its ivory tower philosophy on building things they've unveiled new high-end GMC Sierra Denali's and AT 4x4 pickups now the Denali ultimate starts at 80 grand and I'm sure they're over 100 grand too I guess I just think people have an endless supply of money to buy things with of course you know this high profit margin and expensive vehicles, so they want to build a whole bunch of them. They just figure, oh, people will spend money forever. Who cares? Hyperinflation is on its way. And the other new vehicle they have is the AT4X, four-wheel drive pickup, right? And they'll start at $75,000. Well, $74,995. It's not $75,000, right? Who's paying all these money for pickup trucks? I don't comprehend it. And the $74,995 is just the starting price of these things. The Denali has a standard 420 horsepower engine, so of course it's going to be an immense gas hog. It's going to heat gasoline like no 
road a mile, but it's got all the luxury screens and everything all over the place. What GM is doing, they're trying to push GMC as even higher luxury. You know, that's going to be their luxury models. It's the same company. GM, GMC, it's just a name. It's just, you know, they added a C to GM. <laughs> it's the same company. They just charge more money. It, it kind of amazes me. GM talks about, yeah, we're going to electrify because, of course, you know, Biden and the clowns are in. Oh, we're going to electrify everything, right? But on the other hand, they're making these gigantic monstrosities that get horrendous gas mileage because that's their highest profit margin vehicle and that's what they want to do. They're playing both ends to the middle on this one. They got full grain leather, Paldio wood trim, whatever the heck Paldio is. <laughs> Making a bigger charge and more for them and hoping people will buy them. So GM continues with its rapid increase in prices on their giant vehicles because that's where they make all their profit. There is a short-term thought there. They're talking about electric cars, but they're making these giant trucks that get horrendous gas mileage. If you get all the options and everything, over $100,000. You'll see how that one pans out. Will this be the dinosaur? Will it be the Denali be the last of the giant dinosaurs? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.